I have made mistakes, serious mistakes, but I was not a bad mother. For the past year, former Canadian consul Roxanne Dubé has been one of the most vilified women in all of South Florida. I loved my children and I cared for my children. Her 18-year-old son, Jean Wabafiabazu, died in a bloody shootout with a drug dealer he was trying to rob. Her second son, Mark Wabafiabazu, just 15, was charged with murder because he was outside in the car while the robbery and shooting happened. He's a good boy. He never had any issue whatsoever with behavior in school. During court appearances, she often sat alone, seemingly shell-shocked. My life, um, I don't have many things. I don't have many belongings. But my life is a life of integrity. Judge Teresa Pooler was openly scornful of Dubé, refusing to grant bail to her son. I can remember the judge being very harsh mm -hmm. in some of the things being said to you, that, that almost questioning your fitness as a parent. I am loath to leave Mr. Wabafayabazo in the custody of his mother. Was she right? No. What I have come to realize, Jim, is when you have a child in, in crime, the, the vast majority of people, perhaps you, most people, whether they're parents or not, they'll say, well, she must have done this and this and this, being negligent, not loving them enough, putting her career ahead of her motherhood, like put in the answers that they can figure out by themselves because they don't know that family. The judge did not know me. Dubé is still struggling to make sense of what happened inside this Miami apartment on March 30th, 2015. What we know is Jean and Mark drove here in their mother's black BMW with diplomatic plates. And it was Jean who had a plan. Claiming to want to buy some marijuana, Jean talked his way into the apartment and then tried to rob small-time pot dealer Joshua Wright out of two pounds of marijuana. Street value? Less than $5,000. But the robbery turned violent. As Jean and 17-year-old Wright shot and killed each other. When Mark heard the shots, he ran into the apartment. He saw Jean losing consciousness and that is an image that is very difficult for him to erase. Mark waited for the police to arrive and was taken into custody. In the meantime, Roxanne thought her sons had gone to a movie, and it wasn't until the next morning she was told her boys were in trouble. I said, what else can you tell me? Uh, there's been a shooting. Where are they? The only information is we have is Jackson Hospital. When I got there, I made a fool of myself at the emergency room. I was crying. I, I don't know that I was coherent. She remembers being handed a phone number. And I called, and it was Detective Garcia, who is the lead detective. I said, what, what's happening with my children? Well, I'm afraid I have bad news. I want to hear it. Jean is dead. The phone got on the floor, and from then on, I was in a state of shock. Dubé admits Jean had a troubled past and was arrested a year before in Ottawa for drug possession. And there was certainly a certain allure for Jean in terms of the business aspect of drug trafficking, easy money. She thought he had turned things around and Miami would be a fresh start. I regret that I didn't see as clearly as I see now how troubled he was. Was Jean dead? Her attention turned to Mark. So I only saw him in court, and we hugged publicly. We weren't allowed a private moment. And he, he whispered in my ear again and again, Jean is dead, Jean is mort, Jean is dead, Jean is dead. He said to me, and it was real, I don't know if I can live. I don't know if I can live without Jean. Jean was my world. And I'm going to need help. And I'm going to need help for a long time. When I saw Mark in court, it changed everything because it gave me a purpose. I knew I wanted to live, but I remember telling myself many, many times, I don't know how. And I genuinely did not know how. I don't want to go back to a period like that. But now I'm fine. Mark is right there. For Dubé, this was an experience far different from her life as a diplomat 
before Miami. She was Canada's ambassador to Zimbabwe, dealing with Mercurial leader Robert Mugabe during that country's violent 2008 elections. Oh, here they are. You see when they, they shook hands oh, wow. with Mugabe. Going through pictures of her time in Africa bring back an assortment of memories of her two sons, and you quickly realize how close the two boys were. They're always together. That's what I noticed. Yeah. They're always like... Yeah. Not even far apart. They're yes, almost sir. always right to the hip. Together. Well, as a mother, for me, it's that little baby thing. It's, it's those images when they were so, so small, like these ones. Was Jean always the one to sort of protect his little brother? Yes. And the one in, the one in charge, the one who with the plan, the one who was kind of driving. And Mark was just taking it all in and, and just wanting to be with him. This was not just two brothers who like each other. This was a very close relationship. On Jean's tombstone, a Mark ensured that we would write, forever my brother keeper, because that's what Jean used to tell Mark all the time. Dubé says despite it all, she is not angry at Jean, and her heart goes out to the family of Joshua Wright. There's not a day that doesn't go without me thinking about Joshua Wright. To me, what is most important about what happened is that there were two wonderful, talented, full of dreams teenagers who stupidly were killed and killed one another for two pounds of marijuana. How unnecessary. And I feel so sorry for that. For Dubé, understanding the American court system was a lesson in itself. And it's a very adversarial system. I wasn't prepared for that. I, like most mothers, I'm sure, I thought, I'm going to tell them who Mark is. I'm going to provide all of his school records. He's, they can talk to whoever they want, and everything is going to be fine. I, I was so naive. And then you find yourself in a situation where you better watch what you say because it's part of a different trap system that you're not in control of. Helping her in court, defense attorneys Kurt Obrant and Michael Corey. It was as serious as you get and uh, it, was, it was quite a challenge. Initial reports had Mark as the getaway driver, but thanks to the video they showed that wasn't true. He was in the passenger seat, nor was he the lookout. John's phone was left in the car, so there would have been no way for Mark to talk to him. Hey, I, 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 it's the mother that is the happiest in the world because I get, I get to have my son back. And um, um, I would hide if I wouldn't say it's been difficult. In February, O'Bront and Corey negotiated a deal with prosecutors that kept Mark out of prison. Mark will spend 18 months in the county's boot camp, followed by two years of house arrest and eight years probation. State Attorney Spokesman Ed Griffith said if Mark doesn't complete the program, he could face upwards of 60 years in prison. This gives him a chance to straighten out his life, and if he takes that chance, he will go forward. If he fails, he will be harshly punished. Dubé says through it all, she's learned several important lessons. She wishes she had reached out for professional assistance when Jean was arrested last year in Canada. I needed help, and I didn't realize it. And she also discovered she's not the only one made to feel isolated and guilty. Since this has happened, I've had quite a number of anonymous mothers, people I don't know, never heard of in my life, in Canada coming to me and saying, wow. Me too. Me too, I'm having a child in trouble. Me too, I've had these difficulties. And I sense when they write to me or the, the, they feel judged too. And I, uh, that's, that's, that's a motivation for me now.